Happy Woodworkers Million here with Heartwood Art. And I've got Zach with me today because we're going to show you how I made this raised dog bowl feeder for him. He just loves it. And as you can see, it's right in line with his neck and he can reach the bottom of the bowl just fine. So you can customize this thing to any size that you need for your dog too. It's a real simple frame bill and it has this nice towel on the top too that's so easy to clean and a little decorative edge with it. So let's get started. Hey, if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the channel and come over and visit me at heartwoodart.com and see more fantastic builds just like this. Okay, let's dive in. Now the first thing you'll want to do is measure your dog and depth of bowl to determine the best overall height for your raised feeder. For small dogs, the top of the feeder needs to be in line with the top of the dog's upper chest where the breastbone stops and the throat starts. That way the dog's mouth can reach the bottom of the bowl. That is your total height. For larger dogs, measure how far down the tip of their nose goes comfortably and that should be the bottom of your bowl. So add that to the height of the bowl, and that is your total height of your feeder. Okay, let's determine the length of the legs. So from the total height measurement you just got, subtract the thickness of the backer board you'll be using, and that's the height of your legs. Now let's determine your bowl radius. And here's a quick way to determine the size hole you'll need for your dog bowls. I think the easiest way to do this is to simply turn the bowl upside down on a piece of paper and trace around it. Then find the center point of that circle. And see my tutorial on how to find the center point of a circle the easy way to determine the center point of your dog bowl. Then subtract the lip width. Now, measure the distance from the center point to the outside edge. That is the radius of the bowl to its lip edge. So this is super important. Keep in mind that you'll have a layer of vinyl over the top of your backing board. Now, while it's thin, it will raise the lip of your bowl just a bit. And if your bowl has tapered sides, you may want to make your circle a wee bit smaller. So here's another tip. Keep in mind that the radius is half the diameter. So if you want to decrease your total diameter by one eighth inch for that lip, then you'll only need to decrease your radius by one sixteenth inch. Next, check your bowl fit. To be sure you have the right measurements, try drawing a circle with your final radius measurement on a piece of cardboard or a file folder or some other stiff, thick paper and cut out that hole. Then see how well your dog bowl fits into it. Now keep in mind that you want it a wee bit tight as you'll have that vinyl layer under the lip on the top, which will raise the bowl up just a bit in the hole. Now let's get the measurement for your top backing board. So to determine the size of the backing board for your top, you'll want to first lay out your two bowls on the tile to determine best placement. So lay out two backsplash tiles and mate. Now, while you may be tempted to place each of the bowls in the center of the two tiles, keep in mind that it really doesn't matter where the seam between them is. It will be a whale of a lot easier to reference your placement to one of the corners of a tile that has two straight edges. So place one bowl upside down so that the top and bottom edges are at a good place, giving about three quarters of an inch above and below it. And then position the left edge of the bowl about three quarters of an inch in from the left edge of the tile where it will be cut. Then place your second bowl about one and a half inches to the right of the first bowl. Now measure from the left edge of the first tile to about three quarters of an inch past the right edge of the second bowl. This is the length of your backing board. Round up or down a bit if you need to make it easy for cutting. Now measure three quarters of an inch above and below the top and bottom of the bowls. That is the height of your backing board. And again, round up or down for ease of cutting. Now here's a tip. I drew all of this out on paper first, the backing board and the holes to be cut, just to ensure that I had the right measurements before cutting wood. Okay, now it's time to check your frame clearance. On your drawing, ensure that there is ample room between the bowl edges to clear the framing that you'll be mounting 
your backing board on. Ensure that your two by two legs will fit in the corners. Now, since the rest of the frame aprons will be mounted in the center of those legs, if the legs fit without touching bowl edges, then the aprons won't touch either. Okay, now it's time to recreate your drawing on wood. Cut your board to the dimensions that you measured. Next, you'll want to draw a center line on the board to use for drawing your bowl circles to be cut. Draw a center line down the middle of the board lengthwise and from the end of the board. Make a mark for however much edge you want to have from the end of the board to the start of the bowl circle. Keep in mind that this will be the inner part of the bowl, not the outer part of the bowl's lip. Mine was three quarters of an inch. And from that point, mark the radius of the circle you want to cut on the line. This will be the center point of the circle that you'll cut out later. And this is the center point where you will drill a hole for your circle cutting jig. See my tutorial for the easiest DIY circle cutting jig for your trim router for details. And then repeat these marks on the other side for the other bowl. Okay, now it's time to drill the holes. You'll need four holes if you're using a circle cutting jig. I'm referencing one quarter inch holes here because that is the size of the trim router straight bit I'm using plus the size of the center bolt for my jig. You can adjust your drill holes as needed. Now let's cut those holes. And again, I use my trim router to cut nice round holes, but you can use a jigsaw for this and there are circle cutting jigs for them too. And last, ensure that your bowls both fit well into your freshly cut holes. Then sand all the surfaces of the top backing board and the inside of the holes. And be careful not to take too much off those holes, else your bowls won't fit the same. Now let's cut that vinyl. You can use scissors, but to cut the tiles to the backing board measurements and to ensure I had a dead straight line, I placed my tiles on one of those self-healing green cutting pads and I clamped them into place. And I used a utility knife along a straight edge. And then I cut the outside, but don't cut the holes yet. So let's mount those tiles. Carefully stick the tiles to your backing board. And here's a tip. I only peeled off the backing of one edge and ensured I had that edge and the sides dead square on the backing board. Then I peeled off more backing as I pressed the tile into place. Next, flip the backing board face down and use the circle edges as a guide to cut out the holes in the vinyl with a utility knife. Next, ensure that your bowls fit well into the holes and adjust if needed. Now it's time to cut the legs and start building that frame. So cut your two by twos to length and sand. And boy, my orbital sander makes quick work of this. And here's how I mounted the legs. I used a half inch thick piece of wood to ensure that my legs were situated properly from the edge of the backer board. You will not actually be attaching the legs. We'll be attaching the aprons to the legs and then attaching the aprons to the backer boards. So let's measure for our aprons. And here's how I did mine. After positioning the legs on the backer board, I literally measure between the legs for an exact fit on each one by three apron and cut it to size. And then I sanded it. And as you can see, I dry fit all of my pieces together. Now it's time to drill those pocket holes. So on each one by three apron, drill two pocket holes on each end to attach to the legs. And for the longer aprons, drill pocket holes in the middle to attach to the bottom of the backer board. And let's finish the frame. So now it's time to start attaching the aprons to the legs. Position one of the short aprons center of two legs and secure it into place. And this is where my Craig right angle clamp and right angle drill really came in handy. That clamp holds the two pieces together so tight and I can easily get the correct angle for those pocket hole screws with this small drill head. Then clamp that assembly to a flat surface and attach one of the longer aprons. And then repeat this process until the entire frame is assembled. Once you're finished, attach the four pocket holes, one in each apron, or if you put two in the longer ones, to the backer board to secure the whole frame to it. Now, 
Since I didn't want the raw edge of the vinyl showing on the edge of my backer board, I decided to use some decorative trim that I had on hand, but any three quarter inch wide trim will do. And I chose to miter my edges, but you can also use butt end edges if you like. Now flip the feeder upside down, and that made it super easy to align the trim flush with the top edge of the backer board. And a bit of glue and 5 8 inch brad nails are all I needed to hold it into place. And I love my Ryobi brad nailer. And honestly, the brad nails alone will hold it just fine if you want to skip the glue. Now I chose to stain my trim after I installed it. And I used a cheap art brush to paint it on. And I was super careful not to splash it onto the aprons or legs as that dark stain is tough to hide with paint. And I used a dark walnut stain for mine. And for the legs, enamel paint will hold up better than just about anything for this application. It's hard to scratch and easy to clean. And I chose a matte finish, but you could certainly consider a satin or even a glossy finish if you want it shiny. Now, I chose not to seal my trim or the frame with polyurethane or any other type of top coat. The enamel paint simply doesn't need it, in my opinion. And poly can turn yellow on white paint, but... The stained trim may need it, especially if your dog is a super messy eater. Mine is not. His head never comes out of that bowl, and that trim is as neat months later as the day I put it on. But do what you think is best for your dog. And here's our finished feeder. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this raised dog bowl feeder build. Be sure to come visit me at Heartwood Art for more builds like this and even kennels for Zach and things like that. And I'll see you in the shop.